Well, Halloween may be over, but there are plenty of jump scares left for conservative leader Andrew Scheer, especially from the ghosts of leaders past like Peter McKay, who stunningly described Andrew Scheer's election performance as a hockey player who missed a breakaway goal on an open net. He's not the only conservatives who clearly thinks Mr. Scheer blew it. Uh, Mr. Scheer did win more seats than in 2015. He did win the popular vote. He did take the liberal majority to a minority. So why is his leadership in so much trouble? Will he pass the mandatory leadership review in the spring or even a vote about a leadership review at the Conservative Caucus meeting on November 6th, which is this week? Joining me now are two conservative strategists who know this stuff well. Corey tonight is a former communications director to Stephen Harper. He's with me in studio. And Jason Leader is a longtime conservative strategist as well, and he is in Toronto. Great to have both of you here. Corey, let me just start with you. Um, did, did Peter McKay, while he was in Washington, basically declare open season on Andrew Scheer's leadership? No, I think he was doing what you're supposed to do after uh, you go through an unsuccessful uh, election campaign, which is to have a full and frank discussion and diagnosis of what went on and you know what worked and what didn't. And uh, I think he was sharing his views. I think they're shared by others, but uh, I think he was exercising his franchise to to say what he thought happened there. Yes, but he, but but Jason, when he exercised his franchise, that's a heck of a franchise to exercise. <laughs> uh, his words were pretty poignant. Uh, what do you think he was doing? He's a smart guy. He's been around the block. What, was he essentially saying, look, I'm not going to stab this guy in the front, but if he, if he doesn't make it, here I am. I'm waiting to go. Yeah, he obviously, um, you know, he knew what he was doing there, Evan, and uh, he could have chosen his words very carefully. He did not. I think he, uh, you know, he, he went out, I think, to, to give Peter his due. He went out later that night and sort of said, hey, listen, I, I support Andrew. But uh, yeah, here's the thing. We've got the Conservative Party. And one thing I do d agree with Corey on right there is it's not disloyal to be looking back at the campaign and saying, what can we do better? What could we have done better? I mean, the truth is we had this, we had this big, you know, we had a big product launch. I call it like a $30 million product launch. The Andrew Shear is now on the market and we did pretty well in the east we did very well in the west and we didn't crunch through in that in that main market in Toronto in the 905 and the 416 and I think it's not it's not disloyal to be saying what can we do better in the in the 905 and I think you know Peter uh, you know that was maybe maybe not the best way to do it but I think but, uh, a lot of us are looking at each other and sort of saying what can we do better how can we punch through yeah well punch through and do better is different than the stinking albatross of uh, <laughs> same-sex marriage issues I mean McKay was pretty harsh let's talk about about that because what I've heard it's not just the 905 they the conservatives though they gained seats they lost support in Ontario and Quebec so it's hard to win and a lot of folks pointed out to Mr. Shear's position on LGBTQ issues and same-sex marriage he's then since said I will never march in a gay pride parade what signal is he sending and how serious an issue is that Corey tonight well, I, I, I think it could be a fatal issue. Uh, maybe not in terms of a leadership vote within the Conservative Party, but I think if, in terms of actually uh, being su successful and being elected to, to be the Prime Minister of the country, I think it's, uh, I think it's a deal stopper. Uh, I think there's been a, a sea change in terms of Canadians' views on this, this issue. And I don't think, uh, well, I, well, I do think it's acceptable to say I'm pro-life, uh, but I am not going to legislate on that. In I other think, words, I the think abortion issue is different than is the, different. the you know, same There are two marriage. issues that kind of got hung up on in that one. I think people will accept that. I don't think that uh, Canadians, uh, in fact, overwhelmingly Canadians, do not accept uh, that, uh, it, it, that you can hold the position that I am not in favor of equal rights uh, uh, for gays and that I th have a moral, personal moral problem with gay marriage. Uh, I think that uh, is viewed increasingly as bigotry. So when Andrew Shear says, don't worry, I can't march, and Stephen Harper never marched, but it's, don't it's worry, about, I'm not going to change It's not about it. marching what? in a parade. It's what not about it? marching in a parade. It, it, it is about uh, whether or not you think uh, homosexuality and gay marriage are a sin, personally, or whether you think that uh, uh, that, uh, you know, it's two people who are in love and voluntarily getting into uh, a relationship with each other. You know, to view, to view it as a sin means that you think that uh, being gay is a choice, and I think most people would say it's not.
Uh, right. Uh, so I think it's viewed very differently. It's not viewed as a choice. I think it's viewed as uh, something that's... Uh, so Shear is in trouble. Well, let me just bring in Jason. If she, I mean, Corey's saying this is an issue that he's way offside. It's unwinnable. He then doubled down on it. He was asked after the election, would you ever march in a parade? He said never. Mistake, Jason? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it was a mistake, and I'll, 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 you know, I've been, I've been, I'm keeping an open mind on Mr. Shear's leadership. I want to see what he comes through in the next six months. I want to see where, where he gets to in front of April, what he's learned, how he proposes to improve, all of those kinds of things. I will say, I was a little disappointed in uh, that he didn't take some more time on this, and I think it was, it was completely off key, and it was completely off key for a lot of different reasons. I mean, I like Corey. I, I, I'm a big, I'm a big supporter of, uh, of gay rights, of equal rights, of equal marriage for sure. Um, this isn't just an issue amongst gay people this is an issue i got texts from all over canada over the last couple of days from you know people who conservatives who have gay sons daughters all that kind of you know people in their family people co-workers all that kind of stuff saying wait a second what is this now it's one thing and i i, I agree as well i think it would be maybe inauthentic or a gay pride parade is not the place for mr Shear. the question here what he has to show is that um you know there's lots of different uh, pride events you can do there's lots of different ways you can show support for the gay community um and he's got to find a way between now and april to show that because that is the key to winning well, or one, well, of, the I mean, if they one of the if, various if, things to winning the next election. If they believe them. Uh, okay, last thing, because I want to yeah. get to the, the leadership question. Yeah, okay. Well, I think, I think it's just, it's not about parades or just doing something. It's actually about the point of view. And I think every yeah. generation has an opportunity to uh, try to, to, to raise the bar on issues of equality, uh, whether it's uh, around uh, racial issues. You know, if you look back to the civil rights movement, for instance, uh, you know, going into that, you had a large swath of the American public that didn't think there should be racial integration in schools, that didn't think you should share uh, a drinking fountain with someone of color uh, or of a different race, right. who thought that you should be at the back of the bus. Those were widely held views in America and then up until they weren't, up until right. they were absolutely third rail, you can't hold You're that view. You're racist if you hold that view. Right. And I think we've gone through the same shift on, uh, on, on, on gay rights and gay marriage, uh, something that uh, if you go right. back to the Bill Clinton era, right. you had Tipper Gore upset uh, about these kinds of issues and that uh, right. Murphy Brown was having a baby out of wedlock to... Uh, you know, to where we are now, which is you can't turn on the TV so Sheer, without seeing a gay couple. Okay, uh, so if Sheer doesn't change, that could be a problem. Okay, real quick, because I've got a minute here, I'll start with you, Jason. He's going to face a test in November 6th. There's a vote. Yeah. Caucus can actually vote to trigger a leadership review. Uh, I don't know if they will. Then he's got a mandatory leadership review in the spring. What threshold does Sheer have to get to stay on as leader, and will that be difficult to meet, Jason? <laughs> you want me to set it? I'll set it easily. I think he has to do very well. I think he should do as well as Harper did um, uh, after after the last one. I think you need the you need to, to beat Justin Trudeau, who has proven to be a strong brand, who's weathered a lot of storms, and the Liberal brand is very resilient. I think you need a party that is behind the leader, uh, you know, as much as possible, nearly 100 percent. Not obviously 100 percent is not the is not the threshold. I think he needs to do as well as Stephen Harper, and he needs to be able to show the leadership or in the membership of the party that he's got a plan right. to win. And I think that's going to be that's you know I, I think we've got to be together there can't be any max Bernier's. there can't be any uh you know sort of all sorts of win, uh, different wings of the party you know moving off and unhappy with his leadership he's got to bring everyone together and that requires a very strong mandate i should say joe clark was 70 percent it's not 50 plus one and uh stephen harper got 84 percent and set the bar at 80 percent does andrew Shear have a tough time getting 80 percent of people behind him Corey? Well, I, I think uh, eighty percent is probably a good. Uh, it's probably a good number. Uh, and that that was the number that Harper had in uh, in '04 for himself. He got eighty four. Uh, I think it, it's tough to um, lead the party if you're not in that range. Uh, but you know, in terms of the caucus vote, uh, you know, uh, with all all due respect to Michael Chong and others, I, I don't think we should go down the road of. Uh, uh, unconstitutional uh, deposing so of leaders that's, through, through so caucus. So that's November but, 6, but does he have trouble meeting 80% in the spring at the mandatory? Uh, well, I think he, he, you know, the the jury's out on that. I think uh, I've laid out uh, one of the things I think he's he's got to come around on or he's going to have a big, big problem. 
uh, not just with the party, uh, with, uh, with the electorate, should he pass through uh, uh, leadership successfully. It is going to be a tough test. All right, Jason Leader, Ed Corey, tonight, got to leave it there. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thanks. that. Uh, we will Thanks. be watching what happens on November 6th. That is the first test, and if he passes that test, then, of course, he's got to have the mandatory leadership review in the